So, Master Vow of the Disciple is now available to play. And I am here to do as I normally do. Give my opinion on things. In this case, it is literally all of the opinions on all of the things. Master Vow is 1580, which is lower than Master Vogs 1590, making it considerably more accessible and easier. Those of you who grinded to be GM Nightfall ready this season are more than likely equipped to deal with Master Vow. Master VOG also has an additional modifier that buffs enemies, whereas Vow does not. The fights are not different in any way, with the only changes being the addition of more champions and more shielded enemies. You should come equipped with the proper elements because removing the shields of these enemies with the wrong element is just not the strat. In the first encounter, Glyph Keepers are now overloads, requiring the use of overload rounds to stop them or, you know, a couple of Mobius Quiver shots. You'll want solar damage for the Wraiths, but otherwise, that's it, and the fight can be handled the exact same way. In the Caretaker encounter, you will now have Overload Hobgoblins spawning in continuously after a brief time dealing with the boss, and they will be spawning on both the left and right sides. You will need to assign people to stun and kill these Overload Hobgoblins. The more overloads you kill, the more that will continue to spawn in as they continuously spawn until the obelisk is fully ready. In the Gauntlet encounter, the Glyph Keepers are now both either overload and unstoppable, one of each requiring the use of the respective mods. Hobgoblins now have void shields and wraiths have solar shields. If this doesn't seem like a big deal to you, trust me, it is more of a deal than you think it is. This is definitely the hardest encounter to complete in Master Vow. In the Rolk encounter, again, Glyph Keepers are now both Overload and Unstoppable, with the Overload on the right and the Unstoppable on the left. Hobgoblins also have Void Shields, but they are not as big of a deal in this encounter as they were in the previous. If you never drop Leeching, then you will only encounter these champions once per phase. The damage portion of the fight is still the same, minus the fact that Rolk hits a little bit harder. With an increase in champions comes an increase in the potency of Lucent Finisher. However, this mod is exclusive to Season 16 as of this video, so this probably won't matter after Season 16 unless the mod comes back. The difficulty bump is basically what I was expecting when it came to a Master Raid or Master Anything. More champions and harder to kill enemies in the form of them having shields. Regular enemies, not that tough to kill. I enjoyed the increased combat challenge, makes people have to sharpen their skills a little bit, but I feel that I'm in the minority whenever it comes to an increased combat challenge and the enjoyment of said increased combat challenge in an activity. As much as I would like Bungie to introduce new mechanics into these raids on Master Difficulty, in addition to an increase in combat difficulty, like other MMOs tend to do, I have come to accept the fact that this will never happen again and I highly suggest the artificial difficulty crowd to also accept this fact, especially since Bungie declared this many years ago. Master level content, high level content, is always going to increase in difficulty via combat compared to increased mechanics. This is something I would like to elaborate on in a future video if I can make it work. Bungie has said, that they used to design raids with the normal mode in mind first and then tried to cram in hard mode mechanics. They didn't like how that turned out, so they stopped doing it instead of trying to design raids with hard mode in mind first and then removing mechanics for normal mode. Do I like that? Of course not, but I've accepted it. This is something that I would love for Bungie to reconsider, but right now, that's the deal. And if you don't like it, I really don't know what to tell you. We talked about this with Master Vogue last year. I suggest giving the Master Vogue video a watch as well after this one. That's not to say things are perfect in increased combat difficulty world. That's just more of a point to the people who continuously ask for additional mechanics. Otherwise, I don't really have that much to say on the raid itself. The increased combat challenge definitely makes things harder, which is ultimately the goal, especially the gauntlet, which is the most combat heavy encounter already. Rolk, on the other hand, feels like it has barely increased in difficulty at all, and that's because the majority of the fight is based on execution of mechanics. With no change in mechanics and only the slightest changes in combat, Rolk actually becomes the easiest part of the raid. 
there was nothing in this version of the raid in terms of combat that I would consider unfair while at level or close to it. Champions weren't one-shotting me. Bosses weren't one-shotting me. If I got to hear any things were one-shotting me nonsense, it better be because you're 50 levels under or something like that. Scorn grenades were hitting pretty hard in the gauntlet, but if you're experienced with high-level content, you should kind of know that by now. I was anywhere from 1575 to 1580 for Master Vow in the three runs that I did. Something that I will say, though, is that while you don't really need to change too much of what you do during the raid compared to normal mode, in the Gauntlet Encounter specifically, I highly encourage almost everyone in your team to be running both Solar and Void Weapons and both Overload and Unstoppable mods. This is because of all the Relic swapping. So unless you pre-plan everything ahead of time, everyone should try to have as many things as possible. I was using a Glaive the forbidden weapon in this encounter specifically to have solar and unstoppable and it actually was not too bad i was killing basic scorn enemies in one melee hit at level are you ready for this next one i was using corrective measure a machine gun in a master raid a glaive and a machine gun it was working this is an intense encounter that needs to actually be taken seriously, and the more people on the proper elements, the better. Removing shields should actually be one of the highest priorities in this encounter. I also very much encourage double void resistance for this encounter. This raid actually gave the biggest increase in value to shield-based perks in the history of the franchise. I'm in the process of writing a video about shield perks, but now I'm a little hesitant solely because of Master Vow. I'm still probably going to make it anyway because I don't want to waste all that work. Now, what I will say about Master Vow is that the experience has exacerbated the issues that I outlined in my Destiny going into 2022 video. In that people have lost basically any and all patience regarding champions and the loadout requirements to defeat them. I hope Bungie is having some conversations internally about the future of champions and these higher level enemies, essentially. But am I surprised that there are more champions? No. Do I really mind it? Not really, because that's what I was expecting, and they ultimately don't throw a massive wrench into the experience, minus the gauntlet. Having to work within certain constraints that the game sets is a part of combat difficulty instead of just using the absolute strongest stuff in the game all the time. This does not exactly mean I'm pro-champion though, and I would not mind if Bungie made some shifts to what is becoming a stale experience. Unfortunately, Bungie can only provide one answer to what are many problems to many people. I don't want to dive too hard into champion discussion in this video. It's something that we can address in a follow-up video. I'm just trying to keep this very focused on Vow specifically. I would also like to know why Master Vow is technically easier than Master Vogue, despite both being Master. Again, Vow has a lower power cap and is missing a modifier that buffs the enemies. Is Master VOG going to be nerfed in response? Is this a test? Is this for accessibility? Like, just, you know, what's going on here? Also, to clarify the loot lockout situation, in case people forgot, I believe it works the same as VOG. The first time you do the raid on any difficulty, you will get pinnacle level drops, and then you will get normal drops after that. So if you run master mode first, you're going to get pinnacles, and then if you run normal on the same character in the same week, you'll still get drops, but they won't be pinnacle level. I'm not 100% if that's confirmed, as I only did three master runs and no normal runs, but right now I'm under the assumption that that's how it works. One big change compared to VOG is how adept weapons are handled. In Vault, you have a specific weapon drop during the week from whatever the challenge is. So one week it's Fatebringer and then it's Found Verdict, whatever the order is. In Vow, you have a random weapon drop during the week from whatever the challenge is. So, for example, in three runs on three characters, I got the Fusion, the Linear Fusion, and the Pulse. And I don't believe anyone on my team got any duplicates, so it does seem like it is knockout based. This means that you probably won't be getting a gun that you've already gotten until you get them all. But, that makes it difficult for people to farm specific weapons on a specific week. However, I imagine most people will do their targeted farming via spoils, where you stockpile maximum spoils, 
you do a run of the Master Raid, and then you burn all of your spoils buying the guns at the chest at the end, much like you probably did with Master VOG. But since Vow is only 20 above the pinnacle cap, that makes it more accessible, which means people are more likely to go into the raid and actually do it. Although, let's be real, most people are just going to get a checkpoint, as the situation with Master Raids has not really improved that much, if at all. Adept weapons in Vow have all of their perks randomized. In VOG, weapons had two random perks, one in each column, and then two locked-in perks, which were considered the curated role. In Vow, both perks in both columns are completely random, which I think I prefer, but I, I guess it would depend on what the roles would have been on the Vow weapons, so it's kind of a moot point. Like in VOG, some of the curated roles were good, others were like, eh, this kind of hit or miss kind of situation. So I, I wouldn't put a positive or negative on that, it's just different. Adept Deep Sight weapons are currently bugged, confirmed on Twitter. As of right now, Adept Deep Sight weapons do not contribute towards the crafting pattern of a weapon, but hopefully this is going to be fixed soon. I'm guessing that's because of the Adept tag messing things up, but who actually knows. If you do get one of those weapons, throw it in the vault for now, hang on to it. Vow also has the specific stat armor drops rotating weekly like VOG. In this first week of Master Vow, all armor that drops will have high mobility. The next week it'll be something else, rotating every week until it gets back to mobility and then so on and so forth, you get it. The issue with this is that you will only get armor drops from a Master Mode run besides the challenge. So if you want chances at weapons, I would not run Master Mode for weapons because you're just not going to get them. I would do Spoils Farm and then do a Master Run and then spend them at the end. The strat, TM. But Dado, you say? What about the fact that you can craft Vow of the Disciple weapons? Does that make adept weapons worthless? Yes! But also, no! It's kind of both. See, the differences between the two are so minute that ultimately, it doesn't really matter which one you end up using. We can talk slight stat values and adept mods and all that until our ears start bleeding, but in the grand scheme, it does not really matter. If you have a crafted version of a gun with enhanced perks and you just can't be bothered to get lucky enough to get the adept version, then use the crafted version. If you get lucky in the raid with an adept weapon and you don't want to spend the time leveling your raid gun, then use the adept weapon. But since crafted weapons can be perfectly curated to your specific desires and don't require any re-grinding if something new comes along, I imagine more people are going to drift towards the crafted weapons. This is also because people are more likely to run the normal mode, since you can actually get weapons from the normal mode, but not really the master besides the challenge, which means they're more likely to get enough deep sight weapons to be able to craft in the first place compared to getting adept weapons. Which means running the master raid specifically for adept weapons can feel like a waste of time outside of spoils farm. Case in point, I spent all of my spoils in week one, and did not get the roll of the linear fusion that I wanted, which means I'll need to farm all my spoils up again to have another chance at a few guns that might have good rolls on them. Or I can just wait until I can craft my gun, craft it, and then not really have to worry about it. I understand that giving adept weapons both the possibility of enhanced perks and adept mods might be a level of power creep that Bungie doesn't really want to dive into. And if so, then I, I get it. I don't think it would be that bad, but I get it. That's the choice you're making right now, though. Adept mods or enhanced perks. Adept big ones, pretty popular mod, which might push people more towards adept weapons. I think the linear fusion is the only adept weapon that people in my team were hunting for specifically. But crafted weapons get some slight bonus stats. Both are designed to be very low impact in terms of how they affect your performance. They're both technically upgrades, but they're both things that you can live without and be completely fine, which is by design. That being said, Bungie did mention in an update from a couple of months ago that you definitely don't remember, that they, quote, have some adept reward changes coming for Season 17, end quote. Whether or not this is related to all Adept weapons, or maybe only some of them, in certain activities, currently unknown. Knowing my timing, they'll probably elaborate on these changes one day after I post this video, making all of this irrelevant. But what's not irrelevant 
is that you don't really get many of these adept weapons by running master. Again, you only get three per week at the most without spending spoils, and that requires three raids, or at least three clears of the challenge. As it stands right now, I will get all of the challenges done, I will get the title, and then probably not touch the Master Raid after that. If that sounds familiar, it's because that's exactly what happened with Master VOG. There's a small chance I still do some runs because it is easier than Master VOG and farming specific stats on gear like Recovery or Discipline is kind of nice, but I and the people that I run raids with will be totally fine not running Master because we already have tons and tons of armor that we already don't know what to do with, and getting to that level of min-max is simply not important to us. In fact, I ran most of the master encounters with unmasterworked armor using a stat mod and a couple of resistance mods and was basically completely fine. If I'm going to farm armor, it'll likely be from Master Grasp of Avarice for the Artifice armor with the extra mod slot. I'm actually quite surprised Bungie has yet to do anything with Artifice armor anywhere else in the game. I would definitely like to see the Master Raid incentivized a little bit more more adept weapons specifically. Three random rolls per week, one per character, specifically from having to do the challenge, is not really enough of a draw. And I know this because most people only wanted to do the challenge and then get a checkpoint or just leave. In VOG's case, get the title and then never come back. I want to run this for rewards. I want to be rewarded at the highest level. The focused armor is okay, but high stat armor is available in so many places, and access to raid mods is not enough of a pull when other combat style mods exist, and or they don't make the hugest of differences or impacts, and then half the time some of the stuff doesn't even stack with weapon buffs and whatever. Naturally, this again brought up the idea of just making master mode into contest mode instead. You nix the extra champions and the shields and just pump up power levels, which surprises me given the overwhelmingly negative feedback on increasing combat difficulty in stuff. With VOG, the argument actually had some back and forth since the barrier to entry was so high, but with Master Vow, it's a lot lower. It's reasonable. This is something I'm actually curious about again this time around, but I think I know the answer to it already. Some people are so locked into thinking that they need to be 1580 to do the 1580 raid. And again, like VOG, that's not true. Part of the experience is going in at a slightly lower level. There's not an expectation that you're going to be the exact level of the raid. And personally, I don't think it's the biggest ask in the world to be rank 100 on the season pass and like halfway to the pinnacle cap for the most Omega endgame content in the game, which is specifically designed for the Omega endgame grinder crowd. I just find it interesting that people pee their pants at the idea of going into a master raid at 1578, but then also want contest mode, which would be the equivalent of 1560. But I'm also guessing that people just want contest mode without all of the master editions, I'm guessing that's the main factor. I'm guessing another factor is people just don't want to level, which is a topic we've addressed a while ago, so go check that video out. It's actually a very good video. If Vow was 1590, I get it, but Vow is 10 levels fewer. So what about VOG then? Stay focused, we're, we're talking about Vow right now. That is more for me than it is for you. <laughs> All that being said, I would also really like to continue to express my feedback of just having contest mode be in the game at all times in addition to master for people who want to experience what the raid is like during the raid race. While the raid race is fun, it's also very time limited and there is no reason to not let people experience the raid in this form whenever they want to be able to challenge themselves. Give teams a different color emblem to show that they did the contest mode raid. I don't care. I don't know why this is not a thing. I don't know what the holdup is besides the fact that maybe not nearly as many people as I think will actually utilize this difficulty feature. I think there is room for all three modes to exist. But if contest mode were to become master mode, you would still need to fix the incentive issues that the master mode currently has, except you now would have a raid that, in my opinion, is harder than master mode currently is. 
So have fun trying to give out loot for that other than a one-time emblem or something like that. Now if Bungie wants it to just be a one-off experience and then that's it, then fine. This also brought up comparisons to the Legendary campaign, as anything with combat difficulty usually does. The Legend campaign gets a lot of praise for hitting that great balance of content being fun and being just difficult enough to not completely tilt people off the face of the earth. So why can't the raid just be like that? Because things are allowed to be harder than Legend, and capping the difficulty of the game at that level just because that's where the balance lies in terms of fun factor for the overwhelming majority of people is a little bit of a cop-out. Also, that option kind of exists already. It's basically the normal raid. I think that's basically everything that I want to say about Master Vow. I could keep tinkering with the script. I was up very late tinkering with it, but I, I think I'd rather just call it there. In short, the raid difficulty I thought was fine, but the loot aspect continues to be a pretty major point of contention. I think Bungie needs to give this another review and figure out what they want this to be, or at least communicate to us what they want it to be. More time in the oven, back to the drawing board, whatever expression you want to use. I feel like I remember reading somewhere that Bungie wanted Master Raids to be more of a one and done thing, but I could be misremembering that, or maybe I'm remembering the original idea for GM Nightfalls. Even if that is correct, I don't even, I don't, for, forgive me on that, I, I just, I don't remember. Master VOG never really popped off, besides getting the title. This is looking to be a lot of the same. It could also be because of factors other than loot. Fatigue with the champion system, fatigue and frustration with leveling, fatigue with combat difficulty increases being the main way to increase difficulty, even though that's the path of least resistance and one of the easier things to do. But a follow-up on the inspiration behind Master Raids would be appreciated. And again, I didn't want to talk too in-depth on those other topics that we mentioned because I didn't want this video to be an hour long. Thank you for watching. Interested in your feedback. I will see you next time.